few rooms going. Or it should be somewhere nearby. Assuming she's still here. Think we're all of us glad to see the bearers and the guardians find a home for themselves over in Eastpool. <laughs> Not least because it feels like we've finally got ours back. And for that, I can't thank you enough. Think we're all of us glad to see the bearers and the guardians find a home for themselves over in Eastpool. Anything catch your eye? Thanks very much. There you go. Thanks very much. Much obliged. Fare thee well. <sighs> I've Nearly got greens of all sheets. And Want to know how to tell if the world's going to rack and ruin? Look for busy bladesmiths. Want to know how to tell if the world's going to rack and ruin? The world seems to be changing so fast lately I can hardly keep up. But what I do know is that there's more bad news than good. You can tell that just by looking at people's faces. The world seems to be changing so fast lately I can hardly keep up. But what I do know is that there's more bad news than good. You can tell that just by... Can't say it wasn't a relief to see the better part of the Guardians finally taking their leave. We barely had room to breathe, what with them and us and all the others. All... Ah, Clive, I was just about to send for you. I'd like you to take something to Sir Wade up in Eastpool. Seeds for planting. Thought it was about time they started growing their own food. I'll keep providing them with whatever they need in the meantime, of course. But if Eastpool's going to survive, it's got to be able to fend for itself. As have those poor bearers. They've lived their whole lives in servitude, but now they're their own masters. Small wonder they ain't got the foggiest out to provide for themselves. So it's up to us to teach them. And if you're wondering why you, well, the Wagoneers taking supplies up that way have been coming back with more and more reports of Akashic around the village of late. Sir Wade's putting a brave face on it, but I think even he's starting to worry. And if he's likely to share those concerns with anyone, it's you. <sighs> Suppose I'll just have to send him with the next wagon then. All right. Thanks. Wouldn't ask if I didn't have to. There. That should be enough to keep him in Gizal Greens for a few years at least. Gizal Greens? Not the most mouth watering crop, I'll admit. But they're hardy, they grow fast, and they fill a hole. Better that than something that'll wither away at first frost. And chocobos love them too, which is no small thing. When I say all of us need to pull together to get Eastpool back on its feet, I mean all of us. They ain't exactly succulent, but cook them right, and they're just about bearable. I'll take your word for it. Anyway, Sir Wade'll know what to do with them. And if he don't, well... I'll go up there and show him myself. I'm sure you will. Get them Kazal green seeds up to Sir Wade in Eastpool, would you? And while you're there, ask him what the situation is with the Akashic over that way. He might actually tell you the truth. Get them Kazal green seeds up to Sir Wade in Eastpool, would you? Just because the heavens have gone to wreck and ruin, it don't mean we have to. Ah, <sighs> nearly yeah. done. Let's get this stall set out. I've got greens of all shapes and sizes. Looking for shelter. Colours right. too. Come on inside. I'll introduce you to Martha. It doesn't still hurt, does it? 
It's been a pleasure, Doris. Just like old times. I'll give your offer some thought, my lady. How goes the investigation? Sid, what brings you to Martha's Rest? You. I heard you were out here on your own, tracking our slaver. I trust you're being careful. Of course. And it had to be me. The bearers from the Dragon's Airy confirmed a long-held suspicion of mine that the slaver we've been tracking is an old acquaintance. She's no fool. If we'd come in force, she would have spotted us straight away, and then vanished without a trace. That was her just now, wasn't it? So... Was it a fruitful reunion? I'd say so. She tried to recruit me. Seems her time in Rosaria is coming to an end. She's abducted bearers from across the region and is looking to smuggle them back into Sambrek. After her brush with those beastmen on the road to Northreach, she hired herself an Imperial escort. Which she wants me to join. She's dangerous, Sid. But I think I can stop her. Then I'm going with you. I'll take care of the escort. You can see the bearers to safety. Where are they? The Baum Arches, soon to break camp. You go on ahead. I'll follow once I've sent word back to the hideaway. She asked me to join her at the Baal Marches. It's a wonder she still trusts me after everything that happened. She asked me to join her at the Baal Marches. Guardian saying we're supposed to grow our own. Can't help thinking it would be quicker and easier to take care of the repairs ourselves than explaining all the ins and outs to the bearers. At this rate, only the founder knows when we'll be finished. Can't help thinking it would be quicker and easier to take care of the repairs ourselves than explain. Ah, Lord Rossfield. What brings you to Eastpool? A delivery from Martha. These are Gizal green seeds. Martha's keen to cut the apron strings, then, is she? I jest, of course. You see, I had thought we might be able to revive the old wheat fields, but they'd long since gone to seed, only without the seeds. Martha was hoping you might be able to show the bearers how to plant and tend these, so that they'll be able to fend for themselves. That's not a bad idea. These bearers had only recently escaped their bonds before we brought them here. They know little of freedom, of providing for themselves and their loved ones. Unless we teach them how to live like free men, I fear that all we have achieved in bringing them here is to exchange one master for another. Not that myself and the Guardians have been the best example to them so far, subsisting almost entirely on Martha's charity as we do. It's about time we all started to provide for ourselves, bearers and Guardians alike. Unfortunately, we've been a little too busy of late to focus on much besides bolstering our defenses. There have been alarming reports of... The Horde is closing in. They're coming, so wait, all of them. Time it all. I thought we'd have more time. Gather the men in the square. Send to the rest for reinforcements. Yes, so wait. The Horde. A Kashek, a veritable legion of them. They've been seen prowling around the northern reaches for a while now. We don't have the numbers to hold back a swarm that size. I had hoped to build a perimeter wall so that myself and the Guardians might be able to defend the village, but... Now you're out of time. Precisely. If reinforcements from the rest arrive before they do, we may just scrape through, but I fear that's rather an enormous if. What if you could call on reinforcements from Eastpool? You mean the bearers? We brought them here so they might live, not die, fighting for their lives. So wait. You said you lack men to defend the village. Are the bearers not men? Do they not wish to see Eastpool saved? 
Though they may not be trained soldiers like your guardians, what help they are able to offer could still prove the difference between victory and defeat. You're right, my lord. I will appeal to them. My friends, I humbly beg your aid. We Guardians are few and our enemies many. But I swear we can defeat them with you at our side. You would send us to the slaughter. To serve as bait for those fiends so that you and your men might be spared. And to think we trusted you. Say what you will. A home is not worth dying for. But it is worth fighting for. Sir Wade fights to give you lot a chance. Just like I do. Just like Sid does. We all wanted to give you a home where you could be free. And you got one. Didn't you? This place, East Bull. This is your village, your home. And if you don't fight to protect what's yours, you'll lose it. You know I'm right. This world wants to take everything from you. Everything. Homes, your freedom, your very lives. So then, are you going to stand by and let that happen to you? Are you going to accept fate like good little Bran did and die having never stood up for yourselves? Or will you fight like free men and women? Give me a sword. I never dreamt I'd have a home of my own. And now that I have, I don't want to lose it. I will protect what's mine, or die trying. We all will. Free men and women, fighting together. For Eastpool! Thank you, Martha. Don't mention it. Just promise me one thing that you'll show them how freeborn fight. <laughs> Gladly. Well, if it was numbers you were lacking, you certainly won't be now. Thanks to you. Me? <laughs> oh, I just love the sound of my own voice. Lord Rossfield, my lady, we're ready. So what's the plan of action? We'll divide our forces into several small detachments, each made up of guardians, bearers, and guards from the rest. These will position themselves at strategic points around the village. Upon engaging with the Akashic, each detachment will keep the creatures occupied as best they can, steadily retreating all the while. You're going to lure them into the village? I am. We will have neither the time nor the resources to treat the wounded, so injuries must be avoided at all costs. Instead, we will focus purely on defense at first. By coordinating our withdrawal through the use of messengers drawn from among the bearers, we will aim to have the swarm converge at a point of our choosing. With luck, that point will be the village square. The perfect place for our most able warriors to surround them and fall upon them. And for you and I to finish them off. A sound plan. 
but one that'll require a leader with a cool head and strong nerves to coordinate the retreat. I'd say you have both in abundance to wait, but you'll be needed. Please, leave the last of the fighting to me. Ha! And let you have all the glory. Sir, wait! They're here! Then you know what you must do. We work together. Everyone playing their part. Each shielding the other that no man might fall. That Eastpool might live on. For Azaria! For Rosaria! We've no time to argue, my lord. I'll do as you ask. And I will do as you ask. Suppose we'd better do our bit too, then, eh? Right you are, Martha. Looks like that's the last of them. Lord Rushfield! Change of plan! What is it? Owl from the rest. An Akashic curl's been sighted on Rhiannon's ride and is headed in their direction. Well, the better half of her guard is here. So wait, how many Akashic remain in East Pool? Hard to say. My men are still facing some resistance, but I think the worst is behind us. I could order a detachment or two to fall back and... No. Let them finish the job. You stay here too, Sir Wade. Your men need you. I'll go after the Curl. Join me only when East Pool is won. If you're sure, my lord. May the Founder protect you. Tell me an Akashic curl's heading towards the rest. Get yourself down there. We can handle things here. Come to tell me an Akashic curl's heading towards the rest. Get yourself down there. We can... The curl was sighted on Rhiannon's ride back towards Martha's rest. Found a speed, you, my lord. The curl was sighted on Rhiannon's ride back towards Martha's rest. Eastpool will be safe in our hands, my lord. 
You have my word. East Pool will be safe in our hands, my lord. You have my word. Lord Rossfield, the Curl, is it? It's dead. Thank the Founder for that. And for you, my Lord. We were able to eradicate the rest of the Horde. I have Guardians posted around the village to keep watch for further attacks, but all seems quiet for now. I hesitate to say it, but... I think it might be over. I think it might. We did it. We saved Eastpool. Thank you, my friends. Thank you. No, Sir Wade. It's us who should be thanking you. You brought us together. Showed us what it means to fight for what you hold dear. We never had nothing to call our own before. We didn't know what it meant to protect it. But now we do. We really do. Forgive us, Sir Wade. You and your people saved us. And still we doubted you. But there's no doubt in my mind anymore. We're free men now. So we have to start acting like it. We have to fight to protect what's ours. To protect Eastpool. And we shall. We all shall. Together. This is our home. And if anyone or anything tries to take it away... They'll have us to answer to. Come on then. Let's get to work. This village isn't going to rebuild itself. They're not slaves anymore. No. They're Rosarians. Your father took pity on the bearer's plight. And I believe if he were still with us today, this is what he would have wanted. I believe you might be right. I shall remain here, my lord, and do what I can to help rebuild the village. After all, this is my home now, too. And I could hardly call myself an East Poolian if I didn't pull my weight. 
I think you'll find it's East Pudlian, Sir Wade. But you should be proud all the same. I'll have to pull my weight too. Can't have the rest getting outclassed. Speaking of which, I ought to be getting back. Can we continue to count on your support, Martha? Of course. And I'd be counting on yours too. Us Rosarians have got to stick together, haven't we? Indeed we have. And Clive, come by the Golden Stables when you get the chance. I ain't paid you for delivering them seeds yet. All right. I will. Lord Rossfield, do you remember our very first mission together? Clearing the goblins from the Stillwind Marshes? <laughs> How could I forget? <laughs> There's one sight that I shall never forget. You, facing off against that giant mauble. Not a trace of fear on your face. Since that day, there have been more than a few times when I felt like giving up. When the odds seemed so stacked in the enemy's favor, I thought I may as well just lay down my sword and surrender. But every time, I would think back to the look in your eyes that day and remember what it means to be a shield. Know that whatever trials Eastpool may face, I shall never lose courage. Thanks to you. So wait. You have always been a true shield. I know that Eastpool, and indeed all of Rosaria, will be safe in your hands. Thank you, my lord. I know the rest of the world will be safe in yours. <laughs> I'll do my best. Thank you again for all you have done for me and mine, my lord. You may rest assured that East Pool will be safe in my hands. Thanks to you. Thank you again for all you have done for me and mine, my lord. Thank you, my lord. You showed us what it means to fight for what's ours. And we shall strive to follow in your footsteps. Thank you, my lord. You showed us what it means to fight for what... We couldn't have done this if we hadn't all pulled together. Even you and Martha chipped in. We owe you a debt of gratitude, my lord. We couldn't have done this if we hadn't all pulled together. The hero returns. It's lucky you came by when you did, eh? Not only did my seeds get delivered, but you went and saved Eastpool and all. I just did what I could. And it's only right that you get rewarded for it. Take it before I change my mind. Thank you, Martha. So, Eastpool's finally back on its feet again. And a home to free bearers. Who'd have thought we'd see the day, eh? Well, it was your idea. I know that, but... I never stopped to think what it would mean. Bearers in charge of themselves, thinking for themselves, working for themselves. Like your hideaway, but not even hidden away. Though I suppose the rest ain't much different nowadays. You know... Bearers living free like that. Reminds me of when I first met Sid. Loath as I am to recall that particular day. I take it you didn't always see eye to eye. What happened? Well, if you really want to know, I started doing what I do long before I met Sid. In fact, that's how I met him. Or at least how he came to meet me. He showed up at the stables one day, asking questions about who'd been buying up bearers. Founder knows what he thought I was doing with them. Running a hunt, poking around in their innards. Something awful, anyway. Me? I thought he was a new constable. Thought the game was up. But somehow we both managed to work out what each other was about. And before I knew it, the cheeky arse was rattling on at me about how I was doing it all wrong. After all my hard work, pfft, told me I was giving them relief but not freedom. That my bearers were still dying as slaves. Got right under my skin it did. Told him if he didn't like it, he could bugger off and report me to the garrison. And 
do you know what he did? He smiled, and then he laughed. And then I did the same. We made a pact that day, that whenever one of us was in need, the other would always be there for him. And you were. Well, we both wanted the same thing, to make life better for bearers. Just like your dad. Do you know, I was born right around the time Elwyn became Archduke. Growing up, I saw how he tried to change things. He certainly didn't lack for ambition, that one. Indeed. But the loftier one's ambitions, the harder they are to achieve. Which is why those of us who follow in their footsteps need to finish what people like Sid and my father started. Suppose you're right, I. And if we don't manage it, there's always them who come after us. Good thing we've got a few half-decent sorts waiting in the wings, eh? It's almost enough to give you a little bit of hope. Hmm. <laughs> Just a little. Anyway, enough nattering. Better get back to work. Let's see about making everyone some dinner, shall we? The least the folks who save Eastpool deserve is a hot meal. And you and me ain't gonna save the world on an empty stomach neither. That sounds like a wonderful idea. Don't worry, Clive. You went alone in this fight. Whenever you find yourself in need, be it of money, men, or a bowl of hot stew, the stable's door is always open. Don't worry, Clive. You went alone in this fight. Can't say it wasn't a relief to see the better part of the Guardian. Are the bearers taking well to their new home, do you know? I sometimes worry how they'll manage without me to cook and clean for them. yet. How did Doris come to know a slaver, I wonder? We've waited long enough. She's not coming. <laughs> Ready the bearers. We're leaving. Back to civilization, is it, Mom? With all haste, lest any of you lackwits start talking like these feckless bumpkins. I presume your men are ready. We've suffered too many delays as it is. Any more, and I'll be docking your pay. Uh, yes, Mom. Oh, but before you go, it appears we have company. Kill him. You're welcome to try.
so much for your escort. <laughs> You'll forgive me for not avenging my men. I'm not the swordswoman I used to be. I surrender. Do with me as you wish, Sid the Outlaw. Sid! Ah, Doris. I take it you're not here to rescue me from our brooding renegade. You know, I always wondered where you'd vanished to. But casting your lot with this criminal of all people. Better fighting for a cause than killing for coin. I'm sorry, Sid. I should have told you sooner. This woman, my former master, once trained bearer children to be weapons in service of the highest bidder. She raised me like a daughter, and I did terrible things to earn her favor. It wasn't all terrible, surely. We had our fun, too. You were always so eager to learn, and had such clever hands. All my other children took either to the blade or to the books. Always either or. But you proved yourself a master of both. That's why I kept you for my own. How about it, my little dagger? Care to swear that blade to me again? I never swore my blade to you, nor will I ever. I fight for a higher cause to liberate the bearers of this world. Farewell, master. Thank you for making me the weapon I am. You always were a righteous child. Perhaps that's the reason I loved you so. What do you want to do with her? I am not the killer she wanted me to be. Not anymore. And she no longer has friends in high places. The dame does, though. Her connections at the Imperial Court will see that justice is done. All right. If you're certain. I am. And thank you. For everything. Now, I better let these bearers know that they're safe. I should head back to the hideaway and put Cole's mind at ease. Welcome back, Sid. Doris's message just arrived. I hear you saved more bearers from being smuggled across the border. With any luck, they'll be joining us in the hideaway shortly. Oh, and your letter. You don't need to worry about Doris anymore. I'd been hoping as much. She mentioned one or two things in her report. So the slaver we'd been chasing all these months was her former master. <laughs> Wish I'd known. She's been arrested, by the way, over in Sambrek. Went quietly, or so we're told. And she won't be getting off lightly. The Empire may have no love for bearers, but it's none too fond of black market traders either. Can't have been easy for Doris. I'm sure it wasn't. But don't worry. She'll be all right. I hope so. Suppose you should know, eh? You had quite the past yourself before you came here, or so I understand. Anyway, thanks again, Sid. The curse breakers would be lost without Doris. And you, of course. Keep up the good work, Cole.
by Cardinal here in Norfreet. That's what I heard. And what can I do for you? Come back again. The Dominion's all but done for. And it's lucky we stayed here. Is that shouting I heard from the barracks? Oh, that cell sword the dame's so fond of. That was some fine work you did up in Moor. We'll uh, see you our own affairs from now on now. Duke's got big plans for the Empire. Oh, that cell sword the dame's so fond of. That was some fine work you did up in Moor. I think he was the only one we'll, uh, And you're just gonna fall into line. What else can I do? I don't trust this Duke. If we're not careful, you'll undo all the dame's hard work. Oh, Clive. What am I to do? My wards and I may soon be without a home. What's happened? The High Cardinal has descended from his lofty throne and taken up residence here in Northreach. The High Cardinal? Leader of the Council of Elders, second only to his radiance at the head of the Imperial Government. Not that any of those things still exist. Now he goes by his noble title, the Duke of Oriflam. And what does he want with Northridge? He wants to transform it into a military stronghold, a foundation upon which to build a new Sambrek. He's already secured the support of the various army remnants, with promises that they shall be afforded the respect they deserve in his empire. One built on the confiscated property of the people. He would rob the populace to pay for it. Believe me, I have used every means of persuasion to discourage him from this folly. But for whatever reason, he will not listen to me. What does Captain Philippe make of this? When the town was under attack, it was him the soldiers rallied around. Couldn't he use that influence again? How? by speaking out against one of the most powerful men in Sambrec. A man whose stated aim is to revive the Empire Philippe's comrades swore to serve, and to improve the soldiers' lot within it. The captain can offer them a regular supply of gruel, and an occasional trip to the Vale to help them forget the terrors they face each day. The Duke offers them a vision of strength and safety. No. Any attempt to incite mutiny would cost Philippe the support of his men, if it did not cost him his life. But given the mood around town, mutiny may yet be unavoidable. The people have little appetite for further deprivation, least of all when it serves only to elevate others. And who could blame them? Clive, would you appeal to the Duke on my behalf? For your services to Northreach, you have the respect of the soldiers, and they will take you to his eminence if you ask them. And unlike Philippe, no bonds of loyalty prevent you from speaking your mind to the man. Well, will you try? You could hardly fare any worse than I did. I understand. But if you should change your mind... Oh my What's that? Lee, not the more. He, he would put us on the... A man, the cat, now forgiven. Cly, would for your... And unlike... Well... I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Clive. Tell me then, where will I find this Duke of Oriflam? In the garrison? Overseeing the troops, yes. All right. Wish me luck. The fact that the soldiers trust you may well carry some weight with the Duke. He needs their support, after all. I only hope that you can make him see sense before he tears the town apart. The fact that the soldiers trust you may... I may have met this Duke before, at the Remembrance Ceremony. Let's hope I didn't make a strong impression. Well... 
What do you think? What do I think? I think if we, we already it, have a leader in the dame. Halt. Oh, sorry about that. You're the dame's man, aren't you? You got some business with the captain? No, actually. With the Duke. I was hoping I might be able to speak with him. We're under orders not to let any civilians pass. But you should be all right. His eminence has heard all about you and your heroics. Wait here. I'll go and ask. So, you are the sellsword who lent his aid to the garrison. The Empire owes you a debt, and I shall see it repaid. But tell me, is it wealth that you seek, or favor? Neither, Your Eminence. I thought only to inquire about your plan to turn Northreach into a stronghold. Ah, I see. You are worried the expanded garrison will render your services redundant. Yet you needn't be. A proud fighting man like yourself shall always have a place here. Pride of place, in fact. For too long has the contribution of the noble soldier been under-reckoned. But no more. For it is they who shall see the Holy Empire rebuilt, beginning right here in Northreach. Why here, Your Eminence? The town has been fortunate enough to escape largely unscathed from the recent troubles. Her defenses are sound, and her garrison well prepared. Which is more than can be said for Oriflam or Twinside. The Empire wants for a capital, and I believe Northreach to be the perfect place. With Cairn Norvant as her citadel. Once we have seen to the re-fortification of both the town and the castle, we need only build a wall around both to create a city that would be the envy of the twins. Plans are already underway for the construction. Soon enough, these thralls shall learn that they are no match for the might of Sandbreck. I fear you underestimate how dangerous these creatures are, Your Eminence. Should they return in force, you will need all the people of Northreach to come together in defense of the town. Something they may be loath to do if they've been deprived of their worldly goods. The people will do as their leaders command. If Sandbreck is to be rebuilt, she will require a functioning government. One whose authority is beyond question. That is why this levy is necessary. So that any man who wishes to join the army might do so and be fed, outfitted, and paid as befits a defender of the Empire. <sighs> and yet there are those who persist in peddling the treasonous lie that I seek to steal from the people and drive them from their homes. I suspect they're afraid of losing what little they have left. Precisely. The common folk have little and less, and you mean to deprive them of even that? You would sow the seeds of your new empire in your own salted earth. Sabine, we have discussed this. Yes, and I told you then how putting the empire before her citizens would lead only to revolt. Without an empire, there are no citizens. And in yours, there will be only beggars. Is that what Griga wills for her people? Do not take her name in vain, Sabine. I'll come back later. The citizens revolt. I wonder what the people really think of the Duke's plan. It wouldn't hurt to ask them, I suppose. Let's begin with those on the other side of the wall. Sabine, you are embarrassing me. You're embarrassing yourself! One at a time now. There's enough for everyone. We don't have much, but the dame had us empty the Vale's larders to see these poor souls fed. Because that is what we do. 
We don't have much, but the dame had us empty the Vale's larders to see these poor souls fed. Because that is what we The Lord leaves his tower to build a new king. Her town split asunder. The lady she weeps. The Lord. What is it you're after, sir? Just your opinion, actually. I wondered what you thought of the Duke of Oriflam. <laughs> oh, him. Not much. None of us traders do. It's thanks to nobles like him that we had to set up shop this side of the wall in the first place. Couldn't have the rabble getting any closer to the holy capital, could they? And now he's trying to drive us out completely, threatening to take everything we got from us if we don't clear off. If the dame said she wanted him run out of town, I'll be straight through that checkpoint, tar bucket in hand. The Duke might have soldiers at his beck and call, but us common folk follow the dame and no one else. The Duke might have soldiers at his beck and call. He'll take everything we have. And to think I would be lying under a pile of rubble in twins. A question, if you don't mind. What do you think of the Duke of Oriflam? Mm, don't get me started. You build a life for yourself somewhere, only for some noble to turn up and tell you you've got to hand it all over to him. If he thinks his name and his chains give him the right to empty our purses, he's in for a rude awakening. We'll do whatever it takes to keep what's ours. Whatever it takes. If he comes calling, the only thing I'm giving the Duke of Oriflam's a piece of my mind. Maybe a smack in the gob. If he comes calling, the only thing I'm The garrison salvaged what they could from more blood. Sell anything today? As much as you, I'll wager. I've been hearing a lot of talk about a certain Duke. Nothing good, I'll wager. Going around acting like he owns the place. And with hardly a word to the dame. This is her town, not his. I take it you'd rather she was in charge. As far as I'm concerned, she still is. Just need his eminence to sod off back to Oriflam. Well, the people seem united enough. What about the soldiers? The dame actually cares about this town, unlike the duke. He's only interested in picking our pockets to line his own. The dame actually cares about this town, unlike the Was that shouting I heard from the barracks? Do you think he was the only one who survived? who was talking to his eminence. On the dame's behalf, yes. I was trying to persuade him not to take the people's goodwill for granted, but it seems my words fell on deaf ears. What do you think of his plans? I'm a soldier, mate. He tells me what to do, not the other way round. Listen, I've got nothing but respect for the dame, but I've got a family to look after. That's where my loyalties lie, not with the town or the empire but with my wife and children. If the Duke can get us the men and the equipment we need to fight off those blue-skinned bastards, I don't care how he does it. 
I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the dame. But I'm with the Duke on this one. If turning this place into a fortress is what it takes to protect my family, I'll do it. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the dame. I hear the Duke of Oriflam plans to turn this town into some sort of fortress. Do you think that's a good idea? It's not for me to say. All I know is that unless the Emperor orders me otherwise, his eminence's word is law. Look, no one likes all these taxes and tariffs, but empires don't come for free. Once Sandbrack is back on her feet, we'll all reap the benefits. What the common folk don't understand is, this is for them too. Either we turn the Empire back into a force to be reckoned with, or we live in fear the rest of our lives. What the common folk don't understand is... This is for them. Oh, embarrassing. We already have a leader in the Dame! It's not only control of the garrison he wants, it's the whole of Northridge. Excuse me, do you have a moment? I wondered if you'd mind sharing your thoughts on the Duke of Oriflam. Well, <laughs> he's made a lot of enemies coming in the way he did. I mean, look around us. You can see the state the realm's in. The traders might not like having the screws put on them, but if they volunteered a few more of their hard-earned gill before things got bad, maybe they wouldn't have to. I think the Duke's got a point when he says rebuilding the Empire is the best way of making sure we're all protected. And if that means people who don't know one end of a sword from another have to make way for those who do, well, <laughs> that's just how it goes. Hmm. Let's see what Philippe makes of all this. I mean, it'd be nice if we could all do whatever the hell we wanted and not end up being torn to shreds by a swarm of fiends. But we can't, so we've got to make sacrifices, just like the Duke of Oriflam says. I mean, it'd be nice if we could all do whatever the hell we wanted. Welcome back. Wraiths give you any trouble? None worth mentioning. They're staying put for now. Captain, do you have a moment? For you, certainly. Clive, wasn't it? Thank you for last time. How can I help you? I wanted to ask you about the Duke of Oriflam. Do you intend to go along with his plan? But to tell you the truth, I'm in two minds. It's my sworn duty as a captain of the Imperial Army to obey his orders. But I can't say I agree with him. Philippe. I remember you saying that you became a soldier to protect the people you loved. The dame included. That's right. I did. Well, she doesn't agree with the Duke's orders either. She thinks they could tear Northreach apart. <sighs> and she's probably right. Thank you, Clive. I know what I need to do now. Protecting the people I love is what matters. Doesn't matter how. Well, duty calls, so I better go. Thanks again. It seems Philippe wants to do the right thing at least. I expect Isabel will be pleased to hear that, if nothing else. Ah, Clive. How did you fare? Were you able to speak with the Duke? I was, but... <sighs> so Northreach is to be a fortress after all. Well, it will certainly help to hold back the thralls. There's no denying that. Though I doubt it will come as much consolation to the townspeople whose worldly goods are confiscated to pay for it. They deserve to be heard, Clive. 
to have a say in this new empire the Duke means to build. Sadly, his eminence values their obedience more than their opinions, and hopes to reassert the authority of the state. I fear he sees the people as mere pawns on his chessboard to be sacrificed for the greater good. Needless to say, they themselves are of a different opinion, and would rather their destinies were in your hands. The soldiers, meanwhile, are content to follow their orders. And not just because of the Duke's rank, but because of his vision. I thought as much. Had I sworn to protect Sambrek, I dare say I too would want nothing more than to see it rise from the ashes. Thank you for trying. But the battle is lost. I don't know about that. What happened to your uniform? I handed it in, along with my resignation. Told the lads I wished them well, but that I owe it to those I love to call it a day. But why? Because I realized what really matters to me. Not following some nobleman's orders for the sake of it, but protecting what I care about. Protecting Northreach. I honestly don't know when those monsters will return. But I'm certain they're not finished with us yet. And when they do come back, we need to be ready for them. We need to stand together, all of us. And with you to lead us, my lady, I reckon we can do it. It was you who finally convinced me, Clive. There's no point following orders if they go against everything you believe. Indeed. All of us, standing together. That has always been Northreach's best hope and one which still lies within our grasp. We have only to turn our attentions to the true enemy. Thank you, Philippe, for showing me what I must do. Anything for you, milady. Speaking of uh, standing together, would you mind if I borrowed a few of the lads from the Vale to help keep watch around the town? I fear his eminence has loftier tasks in mind for the guard. Not at all. Be my guest. Wouldn't be the first time. There may be hope for Northreach yet. Especially with men like you and Philippe to champion our cause. I, for my part, shall continue to work upon the Duke. In the stubborn belief that I might still tempt him into joining hands. But I suspect I shall have to call upon your aid again. Until then, Clive. Until then. Despite my repeated advances, his eminence has proven a difficult conquest. Fortunately, I am nothing if not persistent. But, be that as it may, I might yet need you to press the point. Despite my repeated advance. His, his eminence has proven a difficult conquest. Your town needs you. I need you. But the Jew would have I saw the captain just now. He wasn't wearing his uniform. Because he handed it in along with his sword. Said he'd find a better way to protect the town. I would speak with this duke. The way things are going at the garrison, it'll be up to us to defend the town soon.
to go. all of them. A wine can uncross his toes now. Ah, Sid! 
Wasn't expecting you back so soon. So, is it good news or bad? Good, thankfully. Yeah. Ah, that's brilliant! Thanks a blimmin' million! I'll fit him to the smelter right away! May I present to you... The Telemon Furnace! In bad is she? She's a beauty. You saved my beacon again, Sid! And I ain't about to let your good deed go unrewarded. It's... it's fine, really. My bag's, uh, flexible enough already. Oh, don't say that. I'm sure I can make a few improvements to it yet. You could just buy me a bigger... How about that clasp? Looks a bit stiff. Reckon you could loosen it up and make some more room? And I reckon I know how. With a new alloy we've been working on. The Telemon Furnace was just what we needed to perfect it. It's a metal, see? So it's lovely and strong, but it's also, well, stretchy, if you can believe it. Stretchy metal. <laughs> well, if you insist. That is the spirit. You'll love it, I promise. What do you reckon? <laughs> it's actually quite ingenious. Thank you, Owain. Shh, don't mention it. You earned it. And I wanted to get some practice in using that metal anyway. Reckon we'll have all kinds of uses for it around the hideaway. Can't think of any right now, but that's our job, isn't it? Dreaming up new ways to make life easier around here. Maybe even out there, too. One day, the whole world's gonna know about the inventions you've helped us put together. That bag of yours will be the first of many. You mark my words. They'll hardly believe their eyes, I'm sure. Right then, let's get back to work. These world-changing inventions ain't gonna invent themselves. <laughs> right then, let's get back to work. These world-changing inventions ain't gonna invent themselves. <laughs>